We're going to be talking about white box, gray box, and black box hacking testing methods, what they are, when you would use each one, how they affect testing, and why you would choose one over another, what their advantages and disadvantages are. I'm Alex, I'm an information security geek and a hacker, and on this channel, we look at cybersecurity through the lens of an attacker. We learn how to be more productive, more knowledgeable, and overall, happier hackers. So this question came from a comment in my scoping video, and I get why it's so confusing, because we also use the terms white hat, gray hat, and black hat, as a way to define good hackers or bad hackers or like morally questionable hackers. And we also use terms like red team, blue team, purple team. We're gonna define the terms. I'm gonna leave timestamps in case you wanna jump around in the video. We're gonna first cover what the terms are and I'll list off examples throughout the video, what the terms are, how each one affects testing, when they're typically performed and why you would choose one over another. So let's just dive in and geek out. Each term or method refers to the amount of knowledge or the amount of access provided to the tester, whereas white box gives full knowledge, black box gives no knowledge. All three methods are trying to accomplish the same thing. They're all trying to find defects or vulnerabilities within the application. The three terms or methods are used more in application layer testing, but they're still used in network and penetration testing, wireless and spectrum security, just to describe the level of access granted or information provided. Whereas white is full knowledge and black is no knowledge, gray is the squishy term in between that encompasses everything. Everything. So often tests are gray in one way, shape, or form, but true black box testing is zero knowledge whatsoever, and white is full knowledge, full access to the source code, full access to network diagrams and architecture. In gray, everything in between. Using physical security as an example, a black box would be, hey, we have a building, we want you to assess it. Whereas white box would include, here's how the building layout is, Here's the policies and schedule of how the building's guarded. Here's where the cameras are set up. Here's the coverage. Here's how the alerting schematic works. It's just laid all out. Network security would be, we have IP addresses that we want you to test. They don't even typically give IP addresses where you have to do open source intelligence to be able to find them. Whereas on a white box side, you would get full firewall layouts, full listing of IP addresses, what the systems are used for, what's running on them, what should be expected, and then how the alerting mechanisms work. On the application side, you either start with nothing or the URL, or on the white box side, you have full access to the source code, what current bugs exist within the system, what they're currently designing, what the architecture is, what their data models are, what the database is, what versions they're using of operating systems, full knowledge and for cooperation and communication with whoever your testing lead is. At the end of the day, black box is zero information, zero knowledge, white box, full knowledge, full source code, full layout, schematic architecture, and gray box is that squishy term for everything in between. Each method is gonna dictate the type of testing that's done. So on applications with zero knowledge or black box, you're gonna be doing DAS scanning. So using tools like Arachne, Burp, NetSparker, WebInspect, with a slew of dynamic scanners, which go through the application in its running state, it's gonna go through every single parameter and try SQL injection or cross-site scripting or try and put sparse data within the database. Where on the full knowledge side, you have access to the source code. So there's no point going through every single parameter. You're simply just make sure they're sanitizing their inputs, parameterizing their SQL statements, making sure they're running the latest versions of all their software. You just go and log into their server and make sure everything's upgraded. And there's also like tools like check marks to actually do a static code analysis. Within network wire testing, these terms really aren't used too much, but when they are used, it tends to be on a black box assessment, you have no IP addresses, and you need to start the assessment with a corporate identity footprint or open source intelligence to first find the IP addresses before you start testing. On the white box side, it's not really used for external testing. It tends to be, you're gonna log into the servers, you're gonna make sure they're updated, you're gonna make sure they use strong passwords, a strong pal uh, password policy is implemented. A white box assessment on the network layer side tends to be an authenticated scan with something like Nessus or Qualys, or there's a slew of other tools, OpenVAS, 
that you use to just log into every system, enumerate the patch levels, um, enumerate the policies and find weaknesses that way. It's not really like a true world hacker coming in. It's more like a network audit to know where they can improve and point out patches that they should go out and apply. Where on the gray box side, you usually start with the IP address ranges and your point of contact is going to be giving you more information. So when you have a question like, what is the server used for? He can give you a full description, which helps you tweak your testing specifically for that system. Each one of these methods typically happens at a specific time. So let's talk about when. White box testing typically happens as part of the continuous integration, continuous deployment, or CICD process. Testing kicks off every single build and vulnerabilities are handed off to developers as that's found. And that's on the application side. Whereas black box on the application side tends to happen after the application is in production and usually occurs when a compliance is required or a third party asks for penetration testing on that assessment. It only really happens after the application is built and running. Otherwise, it can't really occur. On the network layer side, Whitebox tends to be an authenticated scan, so it should be getting done continuously, monthly at the very least, or quarterly. Because of how frequent network layer vulnerabilities are, or out of patch software is, it should be getting done as quickly and as often as you possibly can. Whereas black box tends to happen annually, because that's what all the compliances say, and it's a good practice just to get it done once a year. We're gonna move on to why you would do each one of these tests, and it'll become more apparent of why gray box hasn't really been mentioned too much. So something you probably realized is it's not really do I do black box or white box, you're going to be doing both and you're gonna be doing at different frequencies because ultimately they accomplish two different things. Black box tends to answer very specific questions and accomplish very specific goals. For instance, for compliance for NIST, ISO, HIPAA, it's a really strong guidance to have one done once a year. PCI actually requires it. It's used as an annual test to evaluate how far a hacker or an attacker can get into your network or your application. Can they escalate? It really tests real world events and it answers questions like, can an attacker breach our network? On the application side, you'll be able to answer, can a low privilege user escalate to a high privilege? Can they do something they're not really supposed to be able to do? Whereas Whitebox really benefits developers on the application to be done very, very frequently as they're pushing out builds to catch vulnerabilities early in the development cycle because it's a lot less of a pain to fix them earlier than they are later. On the network layer side, Whitebox, as I said, is more just like an audit, but you need to know what your patch levels are to make sure that you're getting the appropriate coverage. And the reason for Graybox tends to save a little bit of money. So on the external side, if you're doing a true black box, you have to do open source intelligence. So the tester tends to burn some cycles on that. By doing gray box, you can just give them the IP addresses. You still get all your scoping whys answered, like can someone get in? But you don't have to burn cycles because even if they do find there's a source which reveals your IP addresses, there's not a lot of action you can take to reduce that risk. And the application side, it tends to be a little bit more gray than black because you wanna get the low privilege users, see if you can do authorization testing to jump in from user A to user B or escalate up to an admin. And in order to do that on the application side, you need credentials. So it's not really a true black box test anymore and you get a lot more coverage. The ultimate reason you would do white box testing is mainly to catch vulnerabilities, bugs, system flaws, and patches way earlier when systems are getting built and getting stood up. Whereas black box, you need to do it for compliance and you're gonna be able to get real world questions answered. White box on the application side is really important for developers to catch bugs earlier in the development cycle because they're a lot cheaper to fix them. For black box application testing usually thrives for authorization and authentication testing and can find things that static code analysis won't be able to find, especially when it comes to third party libraries and vulnerabilities that are introduced by mushing those together. Static code analysis tools usually miss those. On the application side, both methods can drive metrics for improvement. Where on the network layer side from a black box penetration testing perspective, metrics aren't always repeatable because the attack method will change from test to test. What it does do is answer very specific questions like can an attacker get into our network, which is perfect for executives, especially during budget time, being able to show an attacker can breach our network 
using these methods and here are the solutions which we suggest to stop them. So that tends to be the perfect time to use penetration testing, black box testing, because it shows real world what an attacker can do with very minimal information. Ultimately, the decision to do a white box or black box assessment comes down to a proper scoping call and asking why questions to make sure that the client gets exactly what they want. And if you haven't watched my scoping video, here's a link to it right now. Hopefully that answers your comment. If you have additional questions, or anyone has an idea of another video I can do, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time.